early on in the wealth creation stages, as you're going toward financial freedom, you know, you've got to you've got to figure out ways to accumulate um, accumulate money, accumulate capital and savings. And most people do this through their um, their full-time jobs. And that's a great way to do it. And, you know, you're getting promotions along the way and salary increases. That's great. Um, but side hustles could be a great way to think outside the box. Tony Robbins always says the quality of your life is the quality of the questions that you're asking. And the same goes with investing and building wealth and financial freedom is your path to that financial freedom comes, I mean, it it comes down to the quality of the questions that you're asking by vetting the sponsors that you're working with, determining your investing goals. The society tells us you work your nine to five, you save up, you get to retire. How did you, uh, how did you know that, wait, this isn't the path. This isn't going to get me there. Mm I, I kind of looked at the tra- trajectory of the type of engineering that I was in, which is much, which much more an environmental civil engineering pathway. I was, I was doing river restoration um, projects, and so it wasn't this like it wasn't like oil and gas engineering, which has a higher mm. level of salaries that I could reach up to. But even then, you know, I had this salary. I was the one working full time. My husband had. Um, was starting his own business and had some income coming in. But in living in our town that we live in, we could just barely make ends meet. And it and I I I'm still going back all the time to create a budget and to to live within my means. And it's it's interesting because we are not overspenders. So there's I'm like, there's a fundamentally yeah. thing here that I'm barely able to make ends right. meet in this town that I'm living in. So I, I have to find a different path. And luckily that did lead me to real estate investing. I found actually a new passion for work in general, and that's creating content, connecting with people, helping educate people about investing because I found it so powerful for my own life. So I mean, that was a, a but at the time I was like, okay, I'm going to be an engineer and I'm going to do this on the side. Um, but it quickly did lead to burnout. So I think the one thing that I want to start out with as I start to talk about my journey is that I want everybody as they develop side hustles to really think about it. Like, does this bring me joy? Does this uplift me? And in that way, it's not just about the monetary gain. It might be that I'm starting the side hustle because it's fun. It's a passion project. It's actually more of my life by design plan than it is my financial freedom plan. But I also encourage you like to be like, how can I monetize this? Because I think that the more we think about doing things we love and that we're really good at and that other people want, those are going to be the things that we can monetize even more. You know, that's so important. Not because if you go after the just the monetary piece, you might get some success for a little bit, but then you the likelihood of you burning out is going to be much greater because you you're not going to love it. And so at a certain point, you're just going to reach that ceiling. So then okay, so you figured out that you were hitting a wall. And as our good friend Dustin Heiner of Master Passive Income talks about, it's your J O B just over broke. And so you realized you were breaking even. This isn't the lifestyle you wanted. You're working hard as an engineer. You have a young child. And so at that point, you know, you eventually got into real estate, but you know, what were the the steps in the early days? Like, how did you even start to think about trying to make money outside of your primary job? Most people think of side hustles as a great way to generate extra income, supplement their savings, all that stuff. And it is, it absolutely is. And it can be a great way to um, augment your job mobility because I can see how it would have been hard. You know, you were in this engineering job, you had no real estate experience to speak of, no professional real estate experience. And for you to then apply for jobs with within the world of real estate would have been probably pretty challenging because they would have said, well, what experience do you have? Oh, you don't have any experience. But so this was a great way for you to kind of strike out on your own. Not, you didn't have to have that prior experience. You just had that passion, that burning passion within you, and which, which makes it all the better because then you pour everything you have into it. And so you're, you're testing things out. You're trying different things. You're trying to make it work. And 
And then so you then, through that experience, then you've gained a ton of experience and you have a ton of value to then eventually add if you decide to pivot and then um, move into that um, different field, which you ultimately did. And now engineering has become your side hustle, which um, I think is just, you know, is, is so, it's so perfect because now you're doing as your main job, the thing that you're most passionate about. And on the side, you can supplement with this thing that you have great experience in and you're still, um, you still care about my first side hustle. I consider to be, uh, my Etsy shop. So it was called uncanny creations. Um, and, uh, so I created all sorts of, um, they were like print designs, um, blankets, pillows, um, uh, for like baby's rooms or for the, the home and general home decor. And what I loved about this was I wanted it to be a way for me, cause I was working in the design world as a creative director. And, you know, when, cre- when that's your job, you have certain things that you're projects that you're doing at work and you have to do it according to the clients or the the business's specifications. You can't just go and create whatever creative thing that you want. And so this was kind of it started out as my outlet for that. Just to I wanted to put this Etsy shop up just for me to have some accountability to keep putting up my own designs, to play and to explore and to put something up. And so it started out great. I had um, a goal at that point. I was like, my goal for this year is to make $1,000 with my Etsy shop. That was my grand goal was $1,000. And spoiler alert, I did not make it. (laughs) So... I know, real super bummer, but I learned a lot. Um, I created a bunch of designs on Etsy um, and I had a lot of fun doing that part, the creating part. Where my downfall came was when people actually ordered the products, which is the whole point of being on Etsy and the whole point of the side hustle, right? It's a big part of the business part of it. When people would, I would see an order come in, I'd be like, Oh God, now I have to go and make the order. I have to like make sure that the, because they could order it in different sizes. I had to make sure it ships at the right date. I had to work with a drop shipper, you know, all these like, ah, these operational things that were not my strong suit, but it taught me a lot about where I'm strong, where, what I'm passionate about and the things that I could, had I wanted to continue to grow that Etsy shop, this was many years ago before virtual assistants became a thing. Um, but now if I had realized that I could be like, okay, well, let me work out the system and then let me hire a virtual assistant. And every time I get an order, I will ping them and they will do all that production stuff. Um, but back then, you know, it was my first quote unquote business. And so I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking about leveraging other talent or bringing other people or building systems. I was just having fun creating the designs. Um, and so ultimately that side hustle flopped. I closed down that shop. Um, but the lessons that I learned were way more valuable than the, I think I made like 600 bucks in the end, (laughs) pre-tax. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we made enough to to break even to keep going. Um, but that that's the other important thing is to have that runway and that backup plan um, just in case. Because, you know, with a side hustle, it can take some ramp up time before you get to a point where it's going to be producing a, a steady stream of income for you. There is no failure, only feedback. And I think side hustles, Mm -hmm. when you step out and take on a side hustle, you're being so incredibly brave. Most people don't ever even consider a side hustle. They just keep their heads down, blinders on, and they trudge forward with their W-2 job. The fact that you're even listening to this and considering a side hustle puts you way ahead of so many others. And it takes a ton of courage. But just know that, you know, I mean... 
Susan, you've had side hustles that haven't worked out as the, as intended. I've had the same. And, you know, it's not about um, getting to that end goal necessarily, that one that you um, set out at the beginning, but just seeing what happens and knowing that each side hustle that you um, embark on will teach you something new about yourself. And it may open up new opportunities, new partnerships, new relationships that you wouldn't have otherwise had access to. And so um, if you're considering it, we salute you. We're in your corner. Um, We're here to support you every step of the way. And then of course, next episode, um, we're going to dive into the specifics. But for anybody, last thing is, you know, we mentioned side hustles can be a great way to accumulate wealth. It can also be a great way to um, uh, amplify. If you're in the investing stage where you're starting to invest pockets of capital here and there, and you're like, this isn't happening fast enough. I want more. And so this can be a great way to amplify that and to have more um, capital to invest. And so if you're interested in learning more about potentially investing with us, you can go to goodegginvestments.com slash invest. 